Well, originalism is a claim that um, the words of a legal document ought to be understood by reference to what it meant at the time of enactment. That's the basic framework of originalism. And um, I think that sort of framework is necessary if you really want to have a separation of powers, because otherwise it's quite possible to read these phrases in the Constitution in ways that would be inconsistent with the idea of separation of powers. So for instance, the president's given the executive power in Article II. Uh, that at the founding meant authority over law execution and, and authority over foreign affairs. But if you had a living constitutional approach to what executive power meant, that could cover the legislative power and that could cover the judicial power. And if you were to so construe it, then you wouldn't have a separation of powers because all three powers would be vested with the president. And so, you know, once you have the idea that the meaning of words and phrases can change over time or that their applications to existing sets of facts can change over time, you make it possible that there won't be a separation of powers precisely because any one branch can claim, well, it doesn't really matter what legislative power meant in the 18th century. What matters is what we take it to mean today. And of course, we can take it to mean anything we want to. So without sort of fixed meanings of these clauses, you run the risk of not having a separation of powers.